was listening to, to Dumb Bitch Media, um, our close friends alphabetically, and they were talk <laughs> they were talking about how they're like, man, it, it fucking sucks to to like be remote like this because Evan Sophie have to like you know because coronavirus and everything. They're like it's it's hard to do these things, you know, separated like that. And I thought, yeah, that is one perk we have is that we are we do still get to do this live you know, like in person. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of nice. That makes it easier. But the downside to that is we have to fucking exist in the submarine all day, every day <laughs> together. Like, yeah, the yeah. actual bit when you are like recording the podcast in the same location, that bit's good. It's <laughs> that, that like two hours, the two hours of the entire week you spend. We, I've not oh. been I have not been outside of like 15 feet of this motherfucker for like six months. Too so, long. So it's like, yes, the, the medium, the, the structure of recording is definitely better, but it, it's like being a fucking deeply uh, checked out married couple where it's by the time we record, there's nothing else to say. <laughs> We've been in the same physical location. When you sleep, I'm still awake 10 feet from you Oh, and vice versa. So it's like, we, we oh, don't I, e- I'm much closer to you when you're asleep. We don't even. <laughs> yes, I've woken. I've woken <laughs> up and mistaken it for night terrors. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's it's this is that thing, you know, a sleep paralysis where you think there's like a demon sitting on your chest. That's what I. And you go like, yeah, that is what it is. <laughs> Shh, go, <laughs> back, go to back to sleep. To sleep. <laughs> we don't even have conversations anymore. Me and Brett do this thing now where we fast forward our conversations because we've had them so many times that is a problem actually where i'll just go like oh it's fucking ridiculous so here's the thing about project veritas going after ilhan omar uh tonight and and i'll start and after like a minute we'll both just with no malice mutually agree like hey do you want to fast forward this and we'll go like sure and i'll I'll go i think the things i'm going to hit are bullet one two and three you understand where i'm coming from there and brett will be like yeah, yeah, and and the reason is because X, Y, and the third one, I think that's a novel observation. And I'll go like, all right, so we would. This probably would have been like twenty minutes, and but I'll go, yeah, yeah, and I'll go, all right, because really, you're only having conversations <laughs> to like feel heard, you know, to like feel like okay, someone understands what I'm going through right now, and we can just shortcut the actual doing of that to like a logical appreciation that had we had this conversation, we would have gotten there organically but we, we can just skip it allows end. us to skip passing it back to the important bits like what do you want from seamless and or what was the good riff on come town yeah it's not like we have anything important to talk we're not no, of course we're not, not saving time for any economic reasons it's just so we can so i can go back to Save s- what time <laughs> it's an sitting in well. my room staring at the wall more there's no reason to be that efficient. Time is the one resource I have a limitless quantity of. I don't even, and that, you know what? Despite that, I have not followed the news at all. This uh, I've embraced liberalism, but only the part where I make uh, self-important proclamations about self-care. So <laughs> this whole weekend, I have not been paying attention to the outside world. I've just been ordering McDonald's and champagne for every single meal. <laughs> He has, that's not a joke. He has actually been doing that. I've been packing up all my shit because here's the joy. We're moving. Rob doesn't own things. 364 days of the year. That That's depressing. But right now, <laughs> no, right now feels it's pretty not. good. It's awesome. Rob doesn't own things. So I've been packing stuff in boxes. That's what I did all weekend. And then every time I came out, <laughs> Rob has more McDonald's and champagne. <laughs> I'll be honest. It doesn't feel good. <laughs> It just feels like you're celebrating not having to move stuff while I'm schlepping all my bullshit around. I, I did. The only things I've caught have been like very specific news items. So uh, one was con- just congrats to uh, Blahovich, The UFC heavyweight champion is now a giant Polish guy. He, he's 37 <laughs> years old. He looks exactly like my brother. There's basically... There's only like four looks you can have as a Polish person. There's like the one I have now that I've shaved my head and grown my beard out, which like I don't even need to do bonus episodes because I just get uh, residual checks from Sons of Anarchy now. They just started appearing. <laughs> there, there's like bulky lifter guy. That's sort of like my brother. This uh, uh, Blahovich is so Polish. 
He he sent he fought Luke Rockholt, like the pretty boy of, of the UFC back yeah, in the yeah. day. This dude punched him into fucking orbit. He's out there with a Tesla car, just like meeting the Lagrange point and staying there until he wakes up. It's beautiful. His after fight interviews are all yeah, I don't think about trash talk. I'm very old and Polish. I just punch Polish power. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's awesome. But, <laughs> But since he he won the belt, I think you know they realized like oh we need to we need to build this guy up somehow. We need like some media around him. Let's let's tell his story like UFC marketing people. <laughs> and so tell the old Polish man story. And <laughs> and so there was an article about his pre-fight ritual. Uh, the headline is Jan Blachowicz's pre-fight ritual includes touching rope from hanged man he found in forest. What the fuck? I just want to read this to you. <laughs> Why? Our champion. The UFC light heavyweight said he regularly returns to a forest in his hometown of Warsaw, Poland, to touch the rope used by a man he found who'd hang himself. <laughs> According to him, the rope is a good luck charm that's had, quote, a 90% success rate since I started good doing luck this. For who? <laughs> I mean, he's the champion. You can debate his methods, but you can't argue the results. Uh, Blahovich doesn't say when he found the man whom he encountered while walking his dog and initially mistook for alive. He said when he called authorities, a police officer on the scene asked if he took part of the rope used to hang the man. Quote, when you find a hanged man, you take his rope for luck. Blahovich remembers the <laughs> officer's reaction. <laughs> That's what people believed in the old days. I checked the internet and sure what enough. Sure enough, that is exactly what people thought and believed in. If you don't believe me, check for yourself. That's Polish excellence right there. <laughs> I like that the cop showed up, saw a hanged man. I was just like, uh, I've seen this before. We got theft of a magical rope. Is this you? And he was like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's really been a great weekend. I, I only received Polish news. Every aspect of that is incredible. From the... Cavalier, like, yeah, I was walking through Warsaw Forest and a dude hanged himself. Like, that's just a normal occurrence in Poland. <laughs> to like, why wouldn't I tamper with the dead body and take the rope for good luck? This depressed man's clearly not 90 using it. Percent success rate. His, th those two things aren't related at all. He just got a fucking dead man's rope like a creep, and then he touches it. It's just so fucked up. That's like genuinely upsetting. If someone told me that in person, I would be, I would be concerned. For their mental well-being and my physical safety while I'm nearby. The other, the other Polish news is uh, Kanye West has just been doing uh, straight tweeting about revolution. So he, he tweeted like, "We are here to complete the revolution. We are building the future." He, he posted uh, a famous image of uh, a Haitian slave uprising killing the white masters, and then he said, "Haiti is where our people started the first revolution that freed us from slavery." One of the one of those times where Kanye turns to good Kanye. Seeing that tweet reminded me of of one of my favorite Polish stories, which I feel like a lot of people don't know, um, which which is the the black Polacks of the Haitian Revolution. The what with the what? Yeah, it's fucking sick. Uh, it it's one of those things where so the Haitian Revolution really brutal, like that's just a, a charnel house, absolutely oh, terrible. Yeah. And for no real obvious reason, the Poles just show up playing a major part. It's like when... It, it's we like, heard there was a bloodbath and we weren't involved, so you know. It's like you got a Spawn comic and Ant-Man showed up for some reason. <laughs> it shouldn't be there. But uh, I, I, I would take this opportunity to try to, to summarize for you guys the story of why the Poles are the Haitian Revolution. Um, it will. I will be pretty much perfectly accurate. I, I know a lot of you come to this episodes because citations needed isn't rigorous enough. Uh, <laughs> so the year is eighteen. All this takes place basically eighteen hundred plus or minus ten years. The poles are partitioned uh, as they as is their want, and they look around Europe. Uh, they're partitioned between Austria, Prussia, and Russia. And they have basically no allies, but they know that Napoleon fucking hates all three of those groups. And they know that with his ascension to consul, like he's up against a lot of monarchist bullshit. He's going to be in a lot of wars. And the Poles, with no economy and really no future, 
they all en masse go to Napoleon and see if they can just sign on as, as mercenaries or whatever. And Napoleon's like, yep, yeah, sure, we could use you as shock troops, whatever, come on in. And so for a while, as Napoleon goes to you know Spain, uh, Egypt, Italy, you have the French army and then this division of, of just straight poles. They have like cool, like uh, dark blue and red uniform. They look like the NWO wolf pack. And I can't emphasize this enough. They're dumb as fuck, uh, but effective. Because in that day, you know, like Napoleon, artillery, that's sort of his thing. You would blow the hell out of some place, some fortress, but then you would actually have to get into the holes that you blew out. Right. And that's not very tactically complex. Like at the end of the day, you do just need to run through the hole. <laughs> and so... There was this idea that we've talked about uh, on bonuses before called the Forlorn Hope. Les Enfants. By the way, there's a lot of French in this story. I can't pronounce any of it. Deal with it. Uh, there's this idea of uh, Les Enfants Perdus, which are the, the lost children. The idea is we're not going to make you be the, the regiment that runs through the hole. We're going to ask for volunteers. Th these are suicide missions. We are assuming you are lost if you sign up for this. But... The ones that did survive uh, would get promotions or, or money or you know land. They, they, they'd incentivize it, basically. I only know about this from that Sabres game. What's that? Sabres of Infinity. He's got, uh, there's two of them out now, and he's doing a whole trilogy. But it is set basically during the same era, and there's a whole Forlorn Hope thing. And it's incredible, and it's so well written. But yeah, before that, I had no idea I had a whole terminology and everything of you just... There's a hole in the gate, and we need we need a bunch of suicidal people to rush through the hole, and we can offer you vast sums of money and titles because we know almost none of you are going to be able to collect yeah, on you it. Can't, you can't yeah. claim it. So there's a famous battle called uh, uh, the Battle of Somosierra Pass in Spain, which like Poles love talking about because Napoleon like called all of all of his like generals together, and you know he's, he's giving this somber speech like, "You're all great men, and that won't change. Today, the task before you is a grim one." And, and he, he lays out that we need uh, Les Enfants Perdus, we need the Forlorn Hope, we need volunteers willing to embark with the greatest bravery through the past. We've shelled it as hard as we could. We've lost far too many French lives, and we need to put an end to this right now. Uh, if, if you sign up for this, you and your regiment will receive titles and wealth. And, and the polls just went like, Hey, up uh, that we got it. We got hey, you, we we called it first. We called it first. We're hey, you hear that, boys? We're all getting paid. And like Napoleon's like, no, that's just this is a very. I need you to understand this is a very somber thing. Hey, Corsican Ben Shapiro says we're all gonna get whores tonight. <laughs> it's like you're you're not going to. Ninety percent of you will probably die. Hey. The line for the whores is going to be short tonight. I'm going to buy all the whores and all the mules. I'm going to get a whore that looks like a mule. No, a mule that looks like a whore. That's what I'm doing. And they, so the point is like, fine. And they, they let the poles go. And the French, the other French officers fucking hate these guys because these are just peasants that show up. They are, they wrote about them as if they were completely guileless, no idea of military tactics. But after many French offensives fail, they just the poles just run straight up the path into the mountain, get mowed down, and just keep going forward. Amazing. They take the fortress of Somo Sierra and come back to Napoleon like, all right, payday, who's getting drunk? It's they did this <laughs> so often that they started to like make a good amount of, of money and fame for themselves. Yeah. So Napoleon would have to like send them again to these he'd send them to these different campaigns and they'd rise through the ranks and the officer corps would go like, well, what do we, where does this go? Like we're getting some really <laughs> high ranked polls all of a sudden um, is you're going to have them leading the French army. The whole point of this was like a foreign legion. So we could use them as shock troops. <laughs> I love the idea that, that we are giving out free titles because no one's fucking dumb enough, to, but the polls are so dumb. They come back over and over and over again. And now it is a problem. It's like, I'm either going to get blown apart or I'm going to be rich. So or I, I'm going to get bone apart. Yeah, that's that's something they probably said, sure. <laughs> and so as they start to like make their bones this way, they get further and further uh, assignments. So now they're out in Egypt, or, like they're out just sort of stationed in, in Italy. Yeah, Napoleon tries to kill them. And they don't die. The same way I try to kill the shittiest children in CK3, 
lead a bunch of campaigns in the middle of nowhere and hopefully they'll eat it. Sending them to their deaths isn't working quick enough. <laughs> so once they're assigned out, out in the boondocks, they just start not paying them. Right? They're like, well, maybe if there's like a little payroll trouble, they'll just leave on their own. But whatever pay French <laughs> payroll trouble <laughs> is better than anything you can do in fucking Katowice, Poland in <laughs> 1797. So they mm. just don't fuck off. This is during the, the Haitian Revolution. Toussaint Louverture is doing his thing. They've, they've abolished slavery. And Napoleon realizes like he made the wrong bet. He bet against uh, Louverture. He wanted the economic bonus that was San Domingue under slavery. And so even though the Haitian people have cast off their shackles, they've liberated themselves. Napoleon has this idea of let's get two birds stoned at once. We'll reinstitute slavery in Haiti and get rid of the Poles. So he loads the Polish regiments Jesus. onto a boat and sends them to Haiti to, as he tells them, like, def defend the French people from invasion from the locals. And the Poles get there, and they realize that is not exactly what the situation on the ground is. Situation on the ground is people there are just fighting for their freedom. They're just trying to, like, create a nation and being stymied by all these great powers. And some of the Poles start going, like, that seems familiar. And now yeah. the French are still using them as these like shock troops to to run in the hole like a fucking fullback. Only well, that doesn't work in guerrilla warfare. So these Polish yeah, regiments are being sent into the mountains and the jungles uh, with no machetes, so they they can't like actually go out and fight. And they are just <laughs> getting wrecked left and right uh, by the Haitian forces. And so the Poles start as they do becoming very like despondent. <laughs> and uh, they're just depressed, these just morose dudes that are just like, wait, is there any plan whatsoever for us? And they're like, yeah, but you just have to stick around and, and it'll work out. And they're given these assignments where, like in one, they were doing evacuations of uh, like the white women of the colony. They told the Poles like, okay, this, it's like Dunkirk. You're gonna, I mean, obviously that didn't happen yet. But <laughs> they told them Dunkirk style, like, okay, you control the beachhead and we're going to go get all the, the white women out of here and the women and children. We're going to get the white colonists to safety. And they're like, and then once they're out, the boats will come back and you'll take us to safety. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> Jean-Jacques Dessalines, which is probably not how you pronounce it, which is one of the uh, lieutenants under Louverture. After Louverture got arrested and, and brought to Europe, Dessalines was like the main guy. And he's like the Sherman of Haiti. He did not fuck around at all. Like, he just scorched earth. He, he would give speeches about everything that was inflicted upon us, we will inflict upon the white population here. Like, he, he, would, he would go town to town and get people riled up to do, like, literally white genocide on the former slave-owning class, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's just been like watching these Poles be the shock troops for so long. And it's not like the Polish people were really, they also weren't benefiting from the rise of phrenology at this time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And so during, during Dezeline's defense uh, against Napoleonic France and their attempt to reinstitute slavery, Dezeline starts reaching out to the Poles. He's just like, you know, it seems like they don't see you as real people, the French. I mean, we know a little something about that. I mean, they don't even equip you. They send you out to die. That's, why are you fighting for them exactly? And the Poles are like, well, you know, maybe it'll, maybe they'll appreciate us and eventually, you know, they'll liberate our country. And they're like, uh. do you really think that's going to happen? I mean, are they even paying you? And they're like, well, they didn't really pay us in Italy. Um, there's like payroll issues and now we're further out. So I guess there's like more payroll issues. It's like, yeah, but when did, when's the last time you were paid for you risking your life? It's like, it's been a really long time <laughs> and you really care about like, you know, having your own country. You, you should be able to relate to that. Right. Cause what we're trying to do here is have our own country. This isn't, we aren't invading. We're fighting for our Liberty and the polls start going like, yeah, it's kind of fucking sucks over here and they start deserting over to uh Dezeline's side that rolls 
And, and it ends up being so successful that, look, it's a bloodbath there. Everyone's killing everyone. Like, the, the polls are baseline racist and terrible, as, as they always are, right? But more and more start deserting so that eventually when the, the massacres of the white colonists happen, Desilene gives these speeches about how we're going to inflict all this pain, but he says... Every white person on this island needs to be eradicated because until they are gone, we are still colonized. This simply is what it is. He's calling for a genocide. Every last one, women, children. I mean, it's just it's slaughter on all sides. But he goes, except for the Poles. <laughs> you know, the, they're like white people, but they have big heads and, and Can't mess them. giant foreheads. And they're like, yeah, they're like, those guys are cool. They're on our side. <laughs> Their weird skull shape should make it pretty easy to recognize them. And, and he he wrote like warmly about the Polish people. He said, quoting, by the way, quoting a historical document here. So get ready. Get ready to clip this for your soundboard. He referred to the Poles as the white Negroes of Europe. <laughs> he meant it with solidarity and it was received that way so the Poles just switched side and, and worked for him once uh they expelled all the white people except for 400 polish people desaline banned uh any whites from owning land or whatever but because the poles weren't white they were able to stay and they all settled in a village called uh uh Kazalu or something like that which was from the polish name uh zaluski and to this day, there is just like very clearly Slavic Haitians that live there because That's all, of, wild. all of the anti-white laws, they Salim literally said under the new constitution, all citizens here are legally black. And the 400 Polish people were like, are we citizens? And he's like, yes. And they're like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking incredible. Good for those poles. Yeah, they started a whole village. Uh, th they went on to uh, get into communism, that little village. Uh, and so then there's a longer, I'll be honest, Haiti's not great right now, so some shit went wrong in the, the oh, intermediate yeah, period. But yeah, there's just there's just a village of a half Polish, half Haitian people that are extremely recognizable as such. Go ahead and Google Polish Haitian and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> you know the saying, black don't crack? Uh, we found the one thing that cracks it. <laughs> it's Polish jeans. Look, tell, isn't that exactly what you think? <laughs> so both yes and no. <laughs> Look at that. That I mean, that is, yeah. That is unmistakably Slavic Haitians. Why does every one of them just look old as fuck? That's, that's it's what a Slavic blood. Yeah, we, we don't <laughs> age well. Look, we came out ahead on that deal. Oh, for sure. But yeah, to the, to this day, like I work with the guy that has my exact full name, and he's a first generation Haitian immigrant. And we do like the Spider Man meme where I'm like Polish. He's like Haitian, the exact same. If you <laughs> if you search my name on Facebook, uh, I'm not on it anymore. But it used to be you'd find me and just all Haitian dudes. That's amazing. So that's that's the Kanye West uh, tweeting about the slave uprising. Bit of Polish history for you. Weird Polish connection. That's delightful. Also, this, that's a hundred percent why you always pay your fucking imperial troops. You dipshits. Stupid fucking French. But that is the only. That's like the only news that I I consumed. I saw. And I only saw I that mean, because like, why bother with anything else? That's delightful. I only saw that because Haiti was trending uh, because of the Kanye thing simultaneously with the. Uh, oh, that's right. I remember you asking me while I was editing, why is Haiti trending? And I was like, I don't know. It's probably something terrible, though. And it wasn't. Well, it was it was it was kind of it was that. And then the Supreme Court lady, I guess she adopted two black kids from Haiti. Oh, Amy Comey Barrett or whatever her name is. It is fucking amazing. The right is just owning Oh the my libs God. on rhetoric now. So good. They have no material analysis, so it's all tied up in identity. So they know that they don't like the new Supreme Court nominee, but they can't find the vector of attack. So they're just like... Yeah, they tried the Catholic thing and that didn't work. Yeah, they go, oh, well, you know, she's uh, Catholic. It's like, what? I thought we had freedom of religion in this country. Are you, are you really? What are you, Stalin? You, you, you hate religion? <laughs> and they're like, no, it's just... Uh, well, you know, with her adopting the... 
Haitian kids, that's like white imperialism. They're like, well, look, she doesn't believe in abortion. People that don't believe in abortion are like, yeah, we'll just have the baby and adopt them. So, you know, she's adopting kids. She's living her morals. What, well, you know, she's very inexperienced. Yeah, so was fucking Kagan when Obama put her on on the court. There's oh, no, she's not even that inexperienced comparatively. Yeah, there's, but there's no in for them. The right is trolling them so hard, too, because they know it. One of the senators is like, uh, uh, I, the Senate has a certain duty, and my duty here is to the, the Constitution, and I will not be participating in confirmation hearings. And they're just like, just like you shirked your duty when you avoided Vietnam. And like, there's no. That's a good own. There's just no. That's genuinely good own. Anybody no who managed to get out of Vietnam deserves to get owned now. at all times because it meant you were wealthy. So good. Fuck that guy. So my favorite outlets of that so far is I've seen at least two blue check libs. Uh, one it was an actual opinion article about, you know, I, I, I may not like her politics, but she's brilliant and she deserves to be on the Supreme Court to prove how far we've come, which mwah, brilliant. Oh, it's so good. God, I love that one. Obviously, she's awful, but we have to support girl bosses. So if I'm going to get permanently owned by a fascist, at least it's a female fascist. That makes me feel better. Theocratic fascism brought in by a woman just feels better for everybody, doesn't it? And they're, they are so broken, they, they genuinely can't get out of that, that fucking thought loop. Hysterical. But uh, my favorite owning by far has been that... I don't even know who the fuck it was. Some right-wing grifter of some kind started selling notorious ACB shirts, which like, yeah, no, that's an easy one. It's three letters. It works for fucking anybody, you dumbasses. Like, it's the easiest thing in the world to riff off of. How dare you co-op tote bag feminism? And absolute nonstop meltdowns in the comments. Yeah, I remember somebody, uh, somebody tweeted like, what the fuck is going on with like Ruth Conda and Notorious RBG? Like, why is Ruth Bader Ginsburg associated with black culture? Where the fuck does this come from? And, and the answer I think that was best was uh, someone said, hi, I'm a white woman here. Uh, tote bag feminism found a niche market of selling to gentrifiers who honestly enjoyed black culture but wanted to own it. So the juxtaposition of racist stereotypes of being, quote, urban or, quote, hood and uh, putting that next to white fragility, apparently that's very funny and uh, sells. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that, 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 yeah. It's like the uh, the yoga pants and wellness company that was like thug yoga, and it's like namaste biatches, and just white women loved it. it just, just an ability to own black culture, and in the same way that when Black Lives Matter happens and these police abuses are going on across the country and there's a, a popular uprising against these sorts of abuses. White women are busy posing for photos with their hands uh, up against the Supreme Court for RBG. Like, it's not so much I want to commit to and take part in the well-being of oppressed minorities in this country. No, they just want to get the cool clout off of it so they can take photos. It's just so fucking depressing. And oh, so yeah. I can see when conservatives do it, they're like, oh, come on, that's in poor taste. Why? Oh, yeah. No, I like on this one, conservatives own away. Like, I, I genuinely didn't think they would be so easily trolled over this. The fact that Trump possibly nominating this woman is going to troll the lips so hard will do more for his voter turnout than whether or not they actually manage to see her. Because trolling the libs is the best way to get your fucking Republican base out. And like, God, it is working incredibly well. To, to the point where you're like, is it really this easy? And apparently it is. Yeah, it really is this easy. Well, it's, it's, I, I feel bad. Like, I don't actually hate liberals. Like, I, I, I think it's coming from mostly a good place. They just, they've been programmed to have absolutely no material analysis. So they, they have to just go media symbols and, and signifiers that they produce project themselves into i hate this aspect of liberal so i don't mind when this part gets owned this bit where it's all projection i can't stand it well they don't have any alternative and That's they've fine. been I they've been told that anyone that tries to bring in a class analysis is like a a sexist bernie we were literally told uh that the dsa and all projects of, of socialism are inherently violent to women mm -hmm. yeah i do remember that and it's just like well why and there was nothing it's just like Bernie bros harass online. It's like, well, there you go. Pack it in socialism. Flip side, if you're this sad about it, you should be more upset about the fact that every single dim in the Senate is like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. Sorry. 
we're out. The reason I go after liberals so much is it's just I don't think it's a bulwark against fascism. I think it's a trap door to fascism. And as many people as we can move off of it for political reasons, good. But also just for mental health reasons because it, it ameliorates the desire to post things online. Like, for example, here, here's our uh, new segment, Are the Libs Okay? This was an actual no. post I'm going to read to you that I saw online. It's, it's brief. Bear with me. I warn you. Uh, this will drive you mad. Meant totally earnestly, here we go. There is no art in this White House. There's no literature or poetry in this White House. No music. No Kennedy Center Award celebrations. There are no pets in this White House. No loyal man's best friend. No socks the family cat. No kids' science fairs. No times when the president takes off his blue suit, red tie uniform and becomes human except when he puts on his white shirt, khaki pants uniform and hides from Americans to play golf. There are no images of the first family enjoying themselves together in a moment of relaxation. No Obamas on the beach in Hawaii moments or Bushes fishing in Kennebunkport. No Reagans on horseback, no Kennedys playing touch football on the Cape. I was thinking the other day of the summer when George H. Bush couldn't catch a fish. And all the grandkids made signs and counted fishless days. And somehow, even if you didn't even like George H. Bush, you got caught up in the joy of a family that loved each other and had fun. Where did that country go? Where did all the fun and joy and expressions of love and happiness go? We used to be a country that did the ice bucket challenge and raised millions for charity. We used to have a president that calmed and soothed the nation instead of dividing it. A first lady that planted a garden instead of ripping one out. We are rudderless and joyless. We have lost the cultural aspects of our society that make America great. We have lost our mojo, our fun, our happiness. The cheering on of others, oh. the shared experiences of humanity that makes it all worth it, the challenges that we shared and celebrated, the unique can-do spirit Americans have always been known for. We have lost so much in so short a time. Someone posted that, and the response was not, please call your family. It was like, yeah, so true. This is why we need Biden. That's deranged. That's someone that can only understand the world and politics through, are the images on TV pleasing to me or make me feel like my status as a citizen here is something worth revering? But if we get Biden, we'll get happy first family photos again with all of his family on the beach, spoon feeding Biden baby food while he drools from the side of his lips and attempts to not imprison far more black people for no fucking reason. I'll tell you what, uh, Jill, I've always thought you, you were one smoking hot lady. Uh, Joe, that is your granddaughter. All right. Well, it's still good. <laughs> They all kiss him on the lips anyway. It's fucking weird. They're it's a weird, so, creepy fucking family. It's so, it's all so fucking stupid. So again, that's why hey, I have, every, every aspect of that's dumb. I still don't understand the garden thing. Like, I, they are so fucking hung up on that garden. And the fact that you thought the ice bucket challenge was like a massive moral victory to be enjoyed is so pathetic. It was literally just like, where is my comforting PR? I don't care that bad things are happening in the country, but the PR no longer comforts me and I'm not okay with that. But someone, please God, do something to make all of these horrible things on my television go away so that I can just fucking eat brunch in peace and ignore the plight of every other human around me again. George Bush was the head of the CIA, and your takeaway was, remember when he couldn't catch a fish? Pretty good. These people have brains of putty. I mean, that person 100% cried nonstop when uh, George Dub was president. They spent three paragraphs talking about the things that make America great. In those terms, an ice bucket challenge made it and nothing else. No other, no policy. Because again, these things don't don't affect them. So it's They're just, right in that Obama did calm and soothe them specifically so that would, they would never once get in arms about the horrific shit that he did. He was very good at that. He was a very good lib whisperer. Let me build a silent murder program with our drones so that I can then hand the keys off to any fascist that ever fucking wants to use it. No, 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 libs, don't, don't protest. Shh. Obama's here. Guess what? He's gonna he's gonna sing a riff off of a modern R and B song that you guys are gonna love. That's why I'm just fucking housing spicy nuggets in three figure increments and drinking champagne because I feel like when I watch this stuff, it's not gonna change. Like between now and the election and whatever the fuck happens after that, it's like still another fucking month. 
These Jesus. people are not movable because they don't actually have politics. So I feel a little bit like when Police. I log on to the Daily Beast, which by the way, Roger Stone called for the arrest of all Daily Beast journalists for being seditious and no critical support to my yeah, uncle. I'm actually, I'm a, <laughs> again, I'm a broken clock. Start with the editorial staff, and then we'll we'll worry about the There's rest. There's some good ones, but I'm just I'm just saying he's like 80 <laughs> percent correct. <laughs> But when I when I log on and try to like absorb political news now, I just want to do what we do, which is like I I've already seen the entire future and the contours of this fucking debate. It's static in nature. Can we just acknowledge it and then do anything else? And so that's what I've been doing. My my self care beyond McDonald's. I've been getting real creative because uh, we're you know we're basically still stuck. New York is still pretty fucked, so I'm just stuck inside. So like. Wow. One thing I, I did. God, it was terrible. One thing I did the other day, which I, I was pretty useful, was Brett went to bed and then I'm just still awake, so I would just like pour a drink and and move my chair right close to the TV, and I would watch these like eight hour long walking in Ho Chi Minh City videos or like the view from a Paris cafe, and just sit there next to the screen and like pretend like just sipping my drink and vibing and just pretending that I'm like outside in a public space, enjoying so sad. places around the world. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting. You know, you just, you, those you, videos are soothing though. I didn't even know they existed until you started watching them. They are very relaxing. Yeah. Just leave them on for like 24 hours. When you come out, you're like, Oh, look, look who's at the fucking Champ de Mars. Me, huh? This is legit. Just a character from apocalypse movie, watching old news footage and being like, Oh, look what life was like. Be out with the people doing regular things. I mean, it, it, it feels, I gotta say it kind of works. Like I was watching one that was just like being in Vietnam, sat at a cafe and when it's long enough and you stick there, like you do hear conversations of the people walking by. It's like, oh, it's a guy fighting with his girlfriend. It's just like, you really feel like you're out. Don't most of the Vietnam guys get creepy with the women at some point, though? I feel like all of those YouTubers. Oh, no, are... all of these get get pretty. There is. There is what, I'm glad you said that. Uh, I just remember I just remember walking in on one and being like, what is he doing? He's just staring at some woman creepily with his camera from like the second or third floor or something. It was, it was uncomfortable. There, there was one, so I was just sort of vibing. It was one of the like walking around town things. And so this guy is uh, account Landland. It would just happen to be that I was like, okay, Landland, what are you doing? And he's like, you know, he'd have text overlays like over here is a great place to get hot pot. And he would have a timer at the bottom, like it is 6.15 p.m. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So you can sort of see what it's like in different neighborhoods at local time. That is cool. I like that. And I'm watching him. I probably found the 45, 50 minutes I'm watching I'm watching him. And then he goes, oh, and we're here. And he takes uh, a turn and he goes into pretty nondescript. It's like some sort of bar. And he, he walks back and it's sort of like the like kitchen and swingers or Goodfellas. Like it's like gallons of water stacked and like toilet paper and stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is like you walk through the sort of the not presentable area to get to like the cool speakeasy thing. And he walks in and, and he sits down on this like dingy couch. And I'm like, Oh, what sort of thing? And 15 identically dressed uh, Vietnamese women come out and stand in front of him. And I'm like, wait a second. What's it? Oh my God. <laughs> wait, a, wait a second. The last 45 Please minutes no. have just been, walking what's going on here and he points to one of them and uh they go in an elevator she's like checking her phone they go in an elevator and uh, they take them to this massage cell oh jesus and i, I notice the time says like 7 12 p.m and then it cuts to a still of high heels on the ground and then it says 7 35 p.m and it's him walking out <laughs> oh my god <laughs> And I real and I'm like, what the? F Did this guy just get his dick sucked for like 20 minutes in the middle of this Vietnam walking thing? And he did. And oh my he god! He just turned the camera back on, and then it's just like she's just disgusted with him, like taking him downstairs. And then he walks out, and he goes back to walking for another 12 minutes. <laughs> what the fuck? And then he walks into another building. I'm like, okay, so this is like after nut. You know, going for some hookah or something. Nope, it's another lineup of oh my god, dude. Of sex Calm traffic down. massage girls. This time, 
It lasts about 40 minutes. You know how I know that? Because he's timing his nut. <laughs> that's what that's for. I'm like, how many of these are? Like, this is like four hours long. And I'm fast forwarding, and he's just nutting every hour oh walking God, up and down. Oh, my God, you're kidding me. My man, Lan Lan, has like 50 videos where the comments are like, get that nut, Lan Lan. <laughs> and it just, it just... The algorithm just put that in <laughs> among my among my like relaxing walk through Saigon. <laughs> That's Look, incredible. It, there there are there are a disturbing number of Vietnam Vietnam based YouTubers who seem to be like very into PUA, creepy, like eighty percent of it is him walking and seeing the sights and being like Right here was one of the temples where refugees found solace during the war. And right here, uh, well, let's check it out. (laughs) I mean, look, it was disturbing, but I also didn't stop watching because, frankly, if you're telling me that a YouTube video on a topic I'm interested in inexplicably ends in the host getting a beach, like, (laughs) I'm a little more interested. If if I was watching the Young Turks and Chank was just like, and 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 Biden's going to capitulate. Of course, <laughs> that's a better show. It's disgusting, but it's a better show. Oh, that's disgusting. I just watch it, but there's a bunch of them. There, there's ones of like New York, where just like cafe in New York. There's one in. Uh, I saw one that was just like. I mean, at least he's paying for it. I, well, I hope he's paying for it. But it's better than the ones that I've seen where it's it's genuinely like they're dudes on the street. Almost always, it's white guys being like, yeah. You know what? People say Asian women aren't thick, but look at the booty on that girl. And they're just creepy camming on women on the street. I just don't know why the algorithm put it in, uh, but I I appreciate it. <laughs> there, the one in Miami, <laughs> the one in Miami really made me feel like I was back home because, you know, Miami is not like a, a walkable city. At all. It's like in Florida. The, the neighborhood I grew up in to this day doesn't have sidewalks yeah. or a sewer system. Like it's yeah, we don't have sidewalks in my neighborhood. There's just no infrastructure. No one wants to pay taxes, so shit just doesn't get done, right? So if you are walking on the street, there is an assumption that like you might be a psychopath, right? I say this as someone that walks around the city (laughs) normally, uh, and people assume I'm a psychopath. But in the Miami one, it was great because it's all the chatter you'd get from like the other locations, Paris, New York, but it's all Florida people who are just hanging out on the street. So like there'll just be some guy just like ordering like a, a cafe cubano, and then someone will walk by just like I don't care what sort of Muslim you are. You heard a gun kata? <laughs> <And just> like, <laughs> what? No, I don't even smell the piss anymore. But I appreciate you telling me, man. Hey, what's up? You want a bump? Just like shit you'd hear <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> hey, hey, man, let me get some bus money. I, I've been like into making sushi. And it's not a real community college, but like it, it's you could learn sushi there. <laughs> I could teach you based in like a, a week. End of this month, we put out a demo. We start hitting clubs. They're just fragments <laughs> of sad Florida conversations. That feels like it'd give me flashbacks, but... 60 acres, pristine land. We go in on it now, split it, lock it down, couple rows of live oak. My uncle retired off that shit. That sounds so familiar. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> just one guy, just one guy like, you're in Miami. Speak English, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my nephew used to fuck with Denzel Curry. No, he didn't. <laughs> it really made me feel like at, at home. No, no one got their dick sucked in, in that one, other than Guy Harvey, who everyone agreed was a great artist. <laughs> yeah, so I was watching those for a little bit, and then the algorithm led me to uh, Steve Wallace. Do you know Steve Wallace? I don't. He is a mystery. He is the most interesting man I've ever seen. Steve Wallace does what he calls uh, stealth camping. Wait, 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 let me guess. You're camping somewhere you're not supposed to be and no one finds you. Yes, but it's not so much somewhere you're not supposed to be as it is a spot. Nobody gives a shit. Why are you there? Oh, that's sadder. My, my idea was oh. like you're breaking in and it's it's incredible. Some sort of interesting. It's so bittersweet because he has a million videos, 10 billion followers. He, he has like the, the YouTube plaque, like the Platinum Award. Oh, he, yeah. He's probably making more than the nation of Guyana. Like he, <laughs> he's making so much money, but the videos, when you watch them, they have that like the same sort of like slow walking vibe where they'll start, he's just got a scraggly beard, a dirty hoodie, and I'll go like, oh my, my wife just uh, dropped me off here. Just like in the middle of like the shittiest town in like East Michigan. 
And I'll go like, oh, you see we got the comfort in here. And I uh, looks like there's some trees in that median there. We'll go ahead and see if, you know, we'll go to the gas station. I got to buy a, I got to buy a, a, a lighter and maybe some, see if they have some shoelaces so we get our hammock up and uh, let's just see what's up. And he just goes into the median or like a junkyard or he puts like aluminum foil on all the windows of his van. He's like, here we are stealth camping and long-term parking at the airport. And it's like, why are you doing this? How much do you hate your wife? I do want to watch that though. No, it's fat. You should, <laughs> you should by the way, put it on right, put it, uh, throw it on. So your thought is like, wow, this guy must fucking hate his wife that every weekend is just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to sleep under my car uh, outside of a football stadium because security doesn't come by that often. But like, as he's talking to the camera, he's a wife guy. He's just like, check this out. This, my wife got me. This is like a nice little, but my beautiful wife, who's the best, best woman that I've ever met in the world, got me this cool little bag where I can put my disposable razors and, and my, my, uh, hot pot from the back of the van. So you know, another great call from my amazing wife. I want to know everything about his life. <laughs> Who is his wife? It's like he's LARPing having been evicted for a ton of money, which would be off-putting, except it does seem like he loves it more than anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad he found what he loves and he's getting paid for it, I guess. he, he his That catch- information also does seem useful right now in this era. His catchphrase is like, well, hammock's up under the underpass, looking pretty good. Wind's a little hard, but that's step one done. His catchphrase is, now it's time for step two. And he cracks like a big Foster's can and just starts getting drunk every episode. (laughs) That kicks ass. He's just in a hammock, getting drunk under an underpass, talking about how beautiful his wife is every single time. And I love it. How does this guy not get robbed? He's walking around with cameras? Because he's where nobody would ever go. Oh, that's right. That's the stealth part of it. Yeah. My bad. (laughs) He's just like, oh. Look at that. It uh, looks like a discarded bit of soiled clothes. So that's usually a good sign that this is a place you can set up camp. I'm like, Steve, th- this is an issue. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I've been spending my time watching Vietnamese hand jobs and pseudo hobos <laughs> drunk under underpasses. The 2020 dream. <laughs> <laughs> really just doing some foreshadowing for my life that I haven't realized yet. <laughs> it's like nothing is, is I've done everything you can do within this fucking submarine. Like I'm just out of, I'm like barely getting joy out of uh, K-pop anymore because there's no, the coronavirus has fucked them up too. Like oh, everyone yeah. is supposed to be on tour. It's supposed to be the big moment, right? Like Blackpink was at Coachella. Now it's like, it's going international only. No, there's travel restrictions and you can't do stadiums. And South Korea's got a good hold on it. So they have a couple of domestic shows. But for the most part, all of the like the studio system there where there's like three to five labels and all the performers are completely owned, they have no idea what the fuck they're supposed to do either. So oh, of course not. The K-pop content, uh, JYP is, is the studio I like the most. Uh, they have like most of the, the bands I like. JYP, you can tell, is out of ideas. He knows he can't do shows, but he has to keep putting out like content for YouTube or digital plat. Like that's the place everyone's going, right? Everyone's starting right. podcasts. Everyone's like, "Well, now's a good time to yeah, create, well. create my YouTube series." And it's like, "Yeah, might as well." Only it's not sustainable. So this is JYP's uh, media ideas for his bands. I just want to list. This is an actual list. You, you can see the quality of his ideas devolve, right? So when coronavirus hit, uh, we had twice or Itzy or Stray Kids or whatever go on a Hawaii trip. Okay. All right. Cooking dinner in silence. It's like an ASMR thing. It's all like, right. All right. Well, that was that was sort of big. Cooking dog treats. Okay. We just did the cooking thing. Going to fashion school. Uh, yeah, that's you know, one. that's good. Che Young is she's, in, she's into design and yeah. she doesn't have the time normally. So, yeah, le- great. Uh, playing Minecraft, uh, silently building a Lego. <laughs> um, <laughs> standing still in a designated area and hitting a balloon with a plastic hammer until uh, someone until the balloon hits the ground. What? It, so there's a, a balloon is floating around and there's a circle on the ground. And all the members of Twice can't leave the circle. 
They have to use a plastic hammer to keep the balloon in, in the air. This is a 20 minute video. <laughs> All right. Uh, every member quietly taking the Myers Briggs test, <laughs> Ma making candles, doing karaoke, playing piano, uh, unboxing and looking at the art of their own album. This is three, That's just weird. This is three episodes long. The fuck? Something called healing camping, where they just send the group out to a mosquito. It's a hundred degrees. Oh my god! You showed me that one. And it was mosquito. Awful. They were all miserable. It was like six episodes long, and it's just them going like. Man, it is too hot to leave the tent. Does anyone even know how to set up a tent? Just every camping trip I've ever taken in my early 20s, it's just the girls being like, I fucking hate this. They went down to a stream. They just looked at a ditch for 20 minutes and skipped stones for half of that. That was incredible because it, everything about K-pop is produced and edited and like tweaked in a specific way to give you a specific emotion. But for some reason, the way they did that, it swung back around to just being cinema verite where you're just getting like the most authentic version of a terrible camping trip you can imagine. It was bleak. It, the thing that made it interesting was how unhappy everyone was. You could hear the bugs, their consulates. Like, what if your favorite idol was extremely unhappy and tired and swatting at mosquitoes? They had like a treasure chest, like, oh, wow, you, you won the, uh, you're the first to set up your tent. Let's see what you won. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, maybe it'll be like a portable fan or something. And they're like, oh, it's a warm watermelon. <laughs> 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 so you, you could tell that, that I was sort of a dud and JYP maybe took it a little personally because like, fine, you don't want to go outside and enjoy a fucking week of camping. Uh, I'm sorry it's too hot. We'll stay inside. So it was uh, gardening your plants uh, in, the, in the JYP dorm, just going around watering the plants. Okay. Th then playing Mafia. And then he really, he's like, you want to stay inside? Fine. Who can stack the most toilet paper rolls in 30 seconds? Every member will be participating. I'm taking this deadly serious. <laughs> Who can pick out the most jelly beans from a bowl using chopsticks in 60 seconds? That one does sound fun. That was an episode. Uh, who can hide a sign on their back for the longest without any other members seeing? These are like, I am hoping, 90 second bits. No, these are all 20 minutes long. No, that's that's awful. Who can run faster while holding an egg on a spoon in their mouth? <laughs> Who can catch a piece of toast with their teeth when a toaster shoots it up at their face? I love how these are just now really terrible corporate team building exercises. Yeah, everyone is out of fucking ideas. Just have them play various games of cards. Have them gamble. That'd be fun. I watched him play poker. Yeah, that might be. Just, you need to. Here's the thing. You need to call JYP up. <laughs> Let him if know. If you're like, hey, I got an I, I got an idea for uh, twice digital content. I'm sure the secretary would be like, yes, sir. I'll put you right through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. I was I was on another call, but what do you got, Brett? For the love <laughs> of fucking God, there's nothing entertaining or fun anymore. This is why it's I've all been done. There's no. There's no. Early on, people were like, this can be a great opportunity for you to grow and really be creative. No, it isn't. It is if you're in animation. Animation is doing great right now. Uh, there's no like fall off at all. Uh, I just finished watching this new show infinity train. That was fucking incredible by the dude who did regular show, which I did not expect him to go from regular show, which is like a modern Beavis and butthead, but you know, with some actual charm to it and a significantly less dumb, but a, but a similar style, like bros broing out kind of feel to it. And, uh, he went from that to like a really incredible, anthologized sci-fi show where it's just like deep plot and characterization and it is very dark for having ever aired on Cartoon Network in like a non-adult swim time slot. Genuinely incredible sci-fi show uh, and every season focuses on a different character. The idea being if you're trying to escape your problems, a sort of crazy sci-fi train appears and is in some way, shape or form tempting to you in that moment, right? Either offered and take you where you want to go or styled in a certain way. You get on, you pass out, you wake up uh, and you're in each train car is its own little mini world, right? And the idea being you work through your problems as you work through the train cars. And where the train is, if you try to get off at that point, is just this weird wasteland. So you can't actually leave until you've worked through your problems. That sounds like very poignant and well thought out and well written and executed. I just, I, I don't know. I can't do animation. It's fantastic. I'm sure it is. So good. I can't watch. So good. That I was like, that was one of the few cartoons. shows I've watched in a while where like it got to the end and I still had that like, holy fucking shit energy. Oh, 
I love those shows. That one was amazing, though. I wish I loved anything as much as you love cartoons. God, they're so good. Well, I wanted to be an animator when I was a kid. I just have no artistic ability. And it's especially in these times, it's delightful because there's no reminder. It's like a true escape. The whole point of animation is they're building an entirely new world for you. They can do things that are so much harder to do with live action, right? There's no weird prop failures. There's none of that. The thing looks exactly the way the person wanted it to look. It's awesome. So it's like, I want to watch a show about dragons and not once think about how weird it is that this dude is hanging out in conversation with people without a mask on. It's like, you don't, because they're all cartoon characters. So you don't ever fucking think about that shit. Versus if I watch The Office and I'm like, nobody can do that now, can they? Go into an office, huh? And that's why I'm just going to keep watching cartoons. But we're going outside the city for a few months, hopefully short term, just to see what the fuck happens since the fall is going to be bad with COVID. And also because I'm tired of being trapped in this tiny ass location and paying New York rent prices when I am unable to do literally anything but sit in my apartment. So cartoons and the ability to walk outside and not be surrounded by humans who aren't wearing masks will be cool. I still assume the humans won't wear masks, but there'll just be way less of them. There's actually like trees to walk through in the fall in the Northeast, which really is gorgeous. I'd like to see a tree. Yeah, that part I'm looking forward to. So there is that to look forward to. There's always cartoons. Thank you, cartoons. And now there's going to be some nature. If anyone has an idea for something I could do to enjoy myself, please let there's me know. There's nature for you too. Because I've already burned through most of the stealth camping videos and I've read Convenience Store Woman like four times. Great book. So, uh, all right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Show accounts at Dumb Awful Show. You can find bonus episodes on Patreon. Uh, and then as always, you can uh, join the Discord and come hang out and chat with us. Uh, subscribe, rest review on iTunes. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks, y'all.